This is the second in a series of four videos on human evolution. It starts with the separation of humanoids from our ape cousins and ends with the beginning of agriculture. Our ancestors split off about seven million years ago. A drier climate put pressure on our forest-dwelling ape ancestors. Some of them ventured out into the grassland, the African savanna. They evolved to cope with the new environment. They began to walk upright, even to run. No longer used for knuckle walking on the forest floor, hands became free to grip things. Our shoulders evolved so we could throw overhand. Australopithecus, the famous Lucy, no longer had to depend on just hands and teeth to defend herself. She and her mate could throw rocks and sticks at both prey and animals that would prey upon them. A little more evolution and our hands with opposable thumbs were up to the task of wielding a club or using a rock as a hammer. Arms and shoulders evolved to handle the shock of pounding. Once we started throwing things and especially pounding things, our brains started to change. We developed handedness. We tended to throw things with one hand, usually the right one. Two million years ago, at the dawn of the old Stone Age, Homo erectus would be holding a rock with his left hand and knocking chips off with a rock in his right until he had crafted a stone axe. We tamed fire. At first it was useful for driving game and clearing land where game animals lived. Then we learned to cook, softening our food. Our jaws got weaker. After millennia of gesturing with our hands, we learned to communicate by symbolic speech. This development set Homo sapiens apart from other hominids. Brain growth accelerated to support new skills, from 350 milliliters for chimpanzees to 400 for Lucy, exploding to 1.2 liters by the time we left Africa. Most remarkable was the acceleration of the rate of brain growth, from 83 millionths of a percent per generation up to three one-thousandths of a percent per generation, a thirty-fold increase in the rate of brain growth. There is a surprising consensus that Homo sapiens started speaking only about 200,000 years ago. That's only the last three percent of humanoids' time on Earth. In evolutionary terms, it's remarkably recent. All observers agree that our amazing powers of speech are closely related to the amazing versatility of our hands. Left brain, right brain separation applies to both our hands and our speech. The sign languages, spontaneously evolved by the deaf, involve the same kinds of abstractions and grammatical rules as verbal speech. Little related to speech fossilizes. Much of what scientists have concluded is a matter of conjecture. But there is evidence that the changes in our throats and larynx required to support speech date from about this time. Those changes are otherwise not helpful. Our throat design, for example, now lets us choke. It must have been for speech. It appears that the brain wiring for communication started to change fairly rapidly as well. Also about this time, scientists make a case that all other hominids, intelligent and social animals that they were, had become good at communicating through gestures. Homo sapiens was simply the first to master verbal communications, which are much faster and more versatile. It offered a huge evolutionary advantage, one which was soon put to use in driving our fellow hominids to extinction. It also modified our social environments, leading to even more accelerated evolution. We were somewhat modern. Body allows DNA indicates that we started wearing clothes not too long after we mastered speech. We had spread throughout the African continent and no doubt established dominance over every wild animal. The major factor limiting our expansion would have been habitat. Hunter-gatherers need a lot of land, about five square kilometers apiece. Population would have been curtailed by warfare among human groups as much as by predation and disease. Looking for more habitat, we spread northward 
in a major wave about 50,000 years ago, although there is DNA evidence that a few pioneers had left earlier. The so-called Paleolithic Revolution took place about the time we left Africa. There was a marked increase not only in the quality of the stone tools, but the tempo with which they continued to improve. Artwork, jewelry, and cosmetics appear in the archaeological record as well. It was cold up north. We learned to sew clothing. We developed better weapons. Tying rocks to sticks gave us spears and then bows and arrows. We started weaving and braiding fabric. We started building houses to shelter ourselves from the cold. Among the first to appear were mammoth bone huts here in Ukraine. The pace of innovation stepped up rapidly. Everything kept getting better. Eventually, we got smart enough to figure it was better to have our food come to us instead of going to it. That was the dawn of the age of agriculture. There were several species of humanoid throughout most of this period. Most famous were the Neanderthals, but there were also Denisovans, Peking man, and the recently discovered Indonesian Hobbit man. Although evolution is a continual process with no clear demarcations, scientists have chosen 400,000 years ago as the date that Homo erectus evolved into Homo sapiens. Homo sapiens was an African species, and for the next 350,000 years, its evolution was confined to Africa. Homo sapiens' migration out of Africa spread us to the rest of the world in fairly short order. We encountered other prehistoric humanoids along the way. Maps of migration out of Africa vary, but all agree on this high-level pattern. Our ancestors went north through the Near East and then spread. The ones that went north from there adapted to survive Ice Age winters. There was a lot to eat, especially mammoth. We met and mixed with other humanoids. The European genome is perhaps 2% Neanderthal. There are Denisovan genes in Asian populations. The Homo sapiens immigrants were forced to learn new skills. They became adept at group hunting. Planning ahead for the long winter led to building shelters and sewing warm clothing. The cousins they left behind in Africa were not forced to make such adaptations. It is hypothesized that the northern branch split about 30,000 years ago, somewhere north of the Himalaya Mountains. Those heading west became the ancestors of modern Europeans. Those going east, the northern Chinese, Japanese, and Koreans. Other populations spread eastward along the southern route through India, merging with those who had gone north. Those who took the southern route included the ancestors of the Australian Aborigines, who somehow reached that continent despite having to cross large stretches of open ocean. The Semitic people went westward. As we spread, other species of humanoids went extinct. Some of the northern Asian people kept on going eastward, spreading across Siberia to Alaska, becoming the first humanoids in the New World. They peopled the Americas about 15,000 years ago. These graphics are conceptual, showing high-level flows. The most important point is that by 10,000 years ago, our population had grown to 5 million, from 10,000 at the beginning of the hominid epoch. That's not bad. It represents an increase of about three one-hundredths of one percent per generation, and we had wiped out all other species of humanoids. Our ancestors had populated most of the niches suitable for hunting and gathering. It was time for something new. That something new was agriculture. That is the story for the next video.